Is God good or what? Amen. 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 Can, can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Y'all see me? <laughs> God showed me some stuff, some amazing stuff. And this week, Cliff Low Dollar preached it. This week, T.D. Jakes preached it. This week, uh, 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 John Hangy preached it. This, he just jumped all over it. God's got something in the air. Amen. Amen. And it's coming to a time when we got to grab it. Okay? Amen. You know, people that want to come in and sit in a pew and want to sing four hymns, two specials, preach one verse out of the uh, uh, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, <laughs> and say a little prayer afterwards, pat each other on the back, never give an altar call, never tell about the goodness of God, and they're out of there by 1145. I know those churches. Yep, yep. right. Raised up in. Yep. And when I was when I was a young man, I I, I, uh, I uh, used to I grew up in Mennonite church, really strict, really strict. And uh, then when I was about thirteen, my my older brother Stephen, uh, who died a few years back, uh, he was going to a little Pentecostal church. And uh, they were having a youth revival and they didn't have too many kids, so Stephen said, Come, come and hang out with us. Come and hang out with us for this revival. Okay. Well, I, I saw a man do something and I was waiting and I kept looking up to see if lightning was going to come through the roof and hit him. Pow! Because I seen him take the Bible, lay it on the floor and stand on it. Then twist his feet and stand on it. He said, I stand on the word of God. And I kept looking for the lightning to strike that thing. But what, I, what I'm coming to is this. There is a whole lot more that we don't see than what we do see. Amen. That's right. Now, this is Mother's Day, and I wanted to read this right here. But uh, there's somewhere we're going. And it's, you know, yes, Lord. Uh, in Genesis 2, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in, in around twenty. And Adam giving names to all cattle, and to the fowls of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help me, or help me, what it says, for him. And the Lord, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And it took one of his and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead it in, instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had been taken from Adam made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man cleave to his father, leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were and they both were both naked, and the man and the wife, and were not ashamed. Now here we go, here we go, here we go. I lost my place. Okay. I lost my place. Uh, yes, and uh, but it said that uh, it was 17 that's right I'm sorry I'm sorry guys the devil tried to mess with you he ain't gonna win he ain't gonna win but there in Genesis 3 it says it says that that God called the woman mother of all life the woman is mother of all life she helped name the blade of grass. She helped name every animal. She helped name and he was his helpmate right from the beginning. God gave him a task and he gave him a, gave him a helpmate. So uh, mothers are not just mothers of your daughter, you're mothers of life. Mothers of everything. Mothers of men. Look at him busting up on a grilled cheese, right? Man, man, get me down, big boy. <laughs> down there. Holy Spirit, come in this house. Come on 
Holy Ghost, and I love you, I praise you, and I thank you. I know what this house and everyone here. Now then, God showed me something. And, uh, yes, Lord, I, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Uh, I, I love it, 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 I love it when he does this, I love it, I love it. When I want to do things I want to do, he said, no, I want this. <laughs> okay. Uh, bear with me, y'all. I don't, I don't, this is so important. Now then, uh, as Korea was saying, thank you for pulling down the blinds. There's something, something to that. <laughs> you guys know me. I'm a. I, I like to when I preach. I like to use demonstration. It sticks with people. Right. It sticks with people. Yeah. It sticks with people. Yeah. You know. Okay. When I was a child, we, we didn't have much money, and I remember I was four years old, and the church brought boxes of food to our house. And I can remember exactly what was in the boxes. The demonstration of the love of God through people into my life. That's Four right. years old, I can tell you what was in that box. That's right. It demonstrates to me the love of God. That's right. That's we demonstrate the love of God to each other and to whomever we meet, just like he was saying. Right. He was crawling all over. They see God in us. Okay? When people, they want to look for God. They want to see this being just walk in out of the atmosphere and handle their problems. Praise God, I want to do that for me. Amen. But he's not going to do that. Because he said, he said, you're going to do this. He said, through my leadership, through my word, but you're going to do this. Now then, he gave us several things to do this. The anointing, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, the Word. But here's the deal. Jesus is inside of us. And therefore, if we have Jesus in us, then we have God the Father in us too. That's right. Okay. Now, then, here's where a lot of churches will go left on you. When you've got Jesus and God in you, He says, I'll send the Holy Ghost. Okay? The Holy Ghost. He's different. He works in us, on us, around us, and through us. Okay? Now, oh, that ain't, see, that ain't nothing but God doing His thing. What kind of sandwich is that? What kind of sandwich is that? It's God doing His thing. No, no, I'm serious. You know what? I was actually going to say on the sandwich, see, that God doing His thing. Okay, it looks like a Begging it, man. Woo, man. You need some help on your man, man. You ready? <laughs> now then. Okay, hold that sandwich up. Everybody can see it. Okay. Everybody knows that's a sandwich. There's bread on it. There's egg. There's cheese. Maybe a little sauce of some kind. Bacon. Bacon. Don't forget the bacon. <laughs> that's it. All the ingredients of that sandwich. Y'all can see that sandwich. You know exactly what it is. That's, right. that's resembling the Holy Ghost. You see them move. You can see them. That's right. But the anointing is the taste of it. Amen. Something you can't see. That's right. Something you can't touch. But it is real. That's it right. is tangible. That's right. It's a Amen. taste. It's a feeling that overtakes you. It drives you to the floor. It sets you ablaze. Amen. And, and see, and see, God is light. Okay? Adam and Eve. That's why I wanted to touch on Adam and Eve right off the bat. Adam and Eve, before they sinned, didn't have flesh like you and I. Okay? They were as God. God is light. He was a being of light. I don't have to go back. In chapter 2, it says, after, after they ate, the apple, or whatever it was, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They said, Lord of mercy, we naked. <laughs> they lost their light. They lost their glory. That's right. Amen. They thought. That's right. 
They thought they lost their glory. The light of God is glory. You realize that light still resides in us this very day? Amen. Right now. Amen. Okay. God named one person. He said they're going to be called Adam. God's first name in creation was called Adonai. Adam. Adam means red. Red man. Red. Red blood. Red. Red. No soil. Oklahoma, good old Oklahoma. Red. Red dirt. You get it on and get in your clothes. You can't get it out. Georgia mud. Alabama mud the same way. It's red. It won't get off. It won't get off of you. And when God scraped Adam, it said of the dusty earth, he, he scraped up legs, he scraped up arms, he scraped up a head. And my father got down on the earth and put, the Bible says, nostril to nostril, mouth to mouth, and breathed life into him. Life came into the soul, into the dirt. And, and man was created with light. Dirt and light. So he called him Adam. He said, for you are my first son. I am Adonai, you are Adam. Mm. Now, God was light. Adam was light. And then you read on down a little bit farther where, where they say, well, we, we're, we're naked. And they, here's the word saying, it says it right there. It doesn't say, they heard him walking through the garden, they heard his voice walking through the garden. They didn't hear him going, <laughs> they heard his voice walking. How can a voice walk and talk about power? Amen. Because the light, where's the light in heaven? <gasps> Come from Jesus. I think it's an accident or, or, or this big ball of light that lights us is called the sun. That's right. <laughs> Now then, as the anointing is in us and every one of us, we all kind of like a big light bulb store. Now, uh, you know the little tiny lights in in your little two-celled little pocket flashlight? They small. They real small. They give off a lot of light. That's right. Okay. That's the average of that light is supposed to have that much. And that's what you're going to get out of it. There's so many different size light bulbs. Now there's light bulbs the size of that table that will light up stadiums on light. Because they can handle that much power. When the Holy Ghost in you gets revved up and he says, he says, oh, meat sack, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> and that anointing starts to grow. And that anointing starts to turn into something. You feel it. The, God, the Bible calls it an unction. It comes up in you. And all of a sudden, you, you feel, you feel fire. You feel power. You feel good. You feel anointed. You're like, whoa, whoa. It makes you want to run and shout. Make you want to swing and slobber and cry and lay on the floor and ball. Makes you want to do all kinds of things that you normally wouldn't do. Amen. Now then, that power, that anointing, is God's electricity. Amen. It's That's God's right. electricity. That's right. Now then, this electricity in you, the only light you're going to have is the power that is in you will light up. People see. Now, and I'm not putting nobody down or nothing like that. If you take somebody that is not, doesn't know Jesus, doesn't know the Holy Ghost, doesn't know the power of God, you put him in the same place as you are. Ain't nobody going to come visit him like they visit you. Ain't, ain't nobody going to be saved Or, or led to the Lord by somebody that doesn't know Jesus. It says, Jesus, you say, the Bible says, you call Jesus Lord by the Holy Ghost. It's inside. So the reason why when we, when we come out of 
come out of the room the other day seeing seeing dad and I said, now if y'all go down there, be careful, there's a Holy Ghost in there. And they all laughed. They said, we all like him. <laughs> okay. It's the Holy Ghost in him because he's got a big old 220 light bulb in him. <laughs> he's going to blind you. Okay. Some people have a little pencil light in them. Okay? And, and their light won't light up literally a closet. But his light... Plants will grow in the closet. That's right. Okay? Each and every one of us are the same way. We have a light in us. Yes. Amen. Okay? Got a light in us. And the Holy Ghost is the light. And the anointing is the electricity. <laughs> and uh, when this light, this, this light was instantly taken, bam, they sinned against God. Oh, devil. <laughs> he said, I got him. What will possess anybody to talk to a snake? You should be worried when a snake talks to you. <laughs> that, that, that's not right. <laughs> run, sister, run. <laughs> and, and, and he said, the, you shall be cursed above all cattle. You'll crawl on your belly in the dust. So I meant the snake had to be standing up. <laughs> That's right. That is weird. Okay. So we've established that each and every one of us have a light bulb in us. That's right. We all have the glory of God in us. That glory is light. Can you see it on you? Okay. There you come in, people. Come on, D. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Well, Zell, come here. John, come here. I'm sitting there. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Karina, is that how you say it? Karina. Come here. Come here. Okay. Woo! Yeah, this my, I'm going to put this mic down. Now then. Okay, I'm going to turn up the lights. Lights out. Lights out, Lights out. Lights out. When God comes, what I got to do? He'll glory. He's going to be hunting for his, his life. He's going to be looking for the life that's good. And that's a good problem. He's going to be looking for him to say He's going to be looking. But see, it's already in you. That's right. It's already in you. That's right. Hold y'all hands up like this. One hand, one hand. With the back face and everybody. You really that light still in you? Adonai. Ready. Oh, oh yeah. cool. Come on together. Now put your fingers, fingers together. together. Even though his skin may be a different color. Adonai. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Even That's though this right. man might be 50 years older than him. Adonai. That's right. She may live in a different state. <laughs> Adonai. That's right. The, 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 the power and the glory of God. Thank y'all. The glory of God cannot be removed from you. Amen. No matter Amen. how far you fall in the sea. You crawl like a snake on your belly and the gutters of burning With a needle hanging in your mouth, doing the most ungodly things that your mind can even fathom and feel. You died out of nine. You can't escape. Amen. The glory of God is inside you. No matter how far you run, Amen. no matter how far you think you can go, no matter how deep in sin, no matter what things Amen. can attach to your soul, no matter how many wounds you have, you see, that's what Satan has to do. He has to attack and attack. He got to climb on you like a boy because he knows it can't be in you in the glory. That's right. Because God came and paid for it. That's right. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't That's matter right. what race you are. That's right. It doesn't matter what you are. It says the word says is what matters. That's right. Yeah. The Lord yeah. God resides in you and I. Yeah. And there ain't a devil in hell can take it. It don't matter how many hell aces, Clydesdales try to pull it out of it. That's, That's right. right. That's Amen. right. That's and right. here's another thing. If, if 
Satan tries to take over your life, no matter what. He tries to take over your mind. Yeah, that's right. To see the power of it. You know, and I for the last couple of days have been talking about the power of suggestion. That's right. Okay? The adult mind, the life that lives in me, to be controlled by suggestion. If somebody is around me, or some people around me for so long, they can talk me with peer pressure as a child. We were talking about that and how the first drink of whiskey you ever took was terrible, nasty, you don't want it in your mouth. But friends around you said, Woo, it could be like us. You gotta drink whiskey. That's some good stuff. You gotta drink, you gotta, you gotta smoke weed. I praise God I was I had angels and wings on my back the whole time. <laughs> but the power of suggestion. To be with certain people, you had to fall to the power of suggestion of your mind. The devil hung out in the tree, standing up straight, suggesting to you. He didn't tell you that. He didn't say, eat that apple. He suggested. The power of suggestion is to take the good of a person's life. That's right. But they cannot get him out of it. Amen. No matter what. He said, us. The light of God is in us. Amen. And when Jesus comes back, he's going to be looking for that light in us. Amen. Amen. Oh, he's good to us. He's good to us. And then, in Romans 12, I mean, in Romans 8, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm going to start at verse 10. It said, and in Christ being, and in Christ being in you, the body is dead of sin. Amen. Okay? We know Christ is. We know the Holy Ghost. We know the light of God is the glory of God is. But the spirit of life is life because of the righteousness. The righteousness is Jesus. Amen. The righteousness that is in us is Jesus. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. No matter what I go through, if I'm laying in the gutter with a needle in my mouth, up in, up in his firm hand, God can remove me out. Amen. All I gotta do is quit listening to the power of suggestion right. and say, I will not do this to myself. That's right. I will not be who the devil says I am. I will be what God says I will be. Amen. I was watching a show last night about the billionaires of the planet. Ninety-five percent of them got for working, working on doing work. Instead of it being given five percent of them. Had inherited to it. Like uh, they said, uh, Tanya, Tanya Walker, Sam Walker's uh, granddaughter, 38.7 million. I mean, 38.7 billion. She was given to her. She didn't work for it. Wow. But all these others, all these, there are a lot of others. Bill Gates, he was like the top five. He started out in the draw. Because he said, I was not be I will not be who my parents say I'm going to be. I will be what God says I will there be. Go. And He will bless me because His light is in me, His anointing is in me, and He will do that which He called me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We all can relate to that. Sometimes we got pain. Sometimes we got muscle cramp. Sometimes we got messed up knees. Sometimes we got messed up backs. Yeah. But it does not define the worry about it. Amen. Because when you're laying in the back in the hospital, you still work for God. You still win the soul. People say, don't go in that room unless you plan on getting saved. That's the way we're supposed to be. Tom Strick was a good friend of, of, of Deborah Knight. And uh, he uh, he got hit with 7620 volts of electricity. 7,620 volts. 
North Alabama Power. They, he had a switch thrown on the line, locked and blocked. So I called. So what this dude here picked, boom, knocked him off the pole. Yeah. And when the power hit him, he said one word, Jesus. <laughs> he, he does not have one single disc in his back. The fried oil. Oh my God. Oh Turn it in the city, buddy. Wire. Hold his back up. But guess what? He said that wire is out. By the glory of God. That's right. He does everything you and I do. Now here's the big deal. While he was in the hospital, he led 21 people to the Lord. Hey, Literally in trenches being flipped over. All they could do was lay there. But his mouth and the glory of God. He Amen. didn't Amen. stop. Amen. Each and every one of us are called according to his purpose to do what he called us to do. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God Amen. woke me up at 4 o'clock at 3.53 this morning. And then I started talking to the song. He said, I heard an audible voice said, you're a son of God. Amen. Amen. And then I heard literally the, the, this, this, these vocals that started coming. And all of a sudden, he translated me to a stage and and there was people there that I knew, but there was people that I didn't know. And and the song went on, and then the name of the song was going to be, This is a Son of God Day. I mean. Oh no, this is a child of God day. I'm going to have a child of God day. No matter what the devil throws at me, I'm going to have a child of God day. I mean. He's good to me. Yes, yes, if I get up and I go to bed at night, and I get to say his name. It's been a it's been a child of God day. Amen. He's good to me. Amen. He's good to me. Amen. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out the Father. Amen. And that's that right there. Then I realized I was reading Genesis. Genesis 2, Genesis 3, and I flipped over every day. The spirit of fear is what they had. As they're hiding in the weeds, with, with fig leaves, they tied together for acres in fear. And, Ooh, we think it. We are thinking. And they heard the voice of God walk. They said, Where are you guys at? What have you done now? But see, Satan took our birthright. Took it right off of us. I got to I had to be on this earth. All they did was they had to sweat for everything. They every baby hurt like woo! And the snake bruised their head and, and it bruised them. That snake bruised them and, it bru and they bruised the snake. All their life changed with a total different direction. What I love about the last part of Genesis there in Genesis 3, it said that they did not eat of the tree of life. So God pinched a limb off the tree of life. And it went for that. And it went with his son, and it went with Aaron, and it went with Moses, and it went with all the men of God. They didn't have a written language like you and I had. They had symbols, and they marked them on their stacks, because the stack came from the tree of life. The ground out there that he breathed life into has two purposes. To bring it back to what he created, and to manifest into our lives. Every single thing that we take for granted every single day, the sandwich and the egg, the towel on this floor, the lumber that Uncle Dennis puts up, the carpet, the rug, the everything, the plastics on the wall came from the earth. That's right. They didn't have nothing but the meat sack they were standing in. He even gave the wheel to the old chunk of wood and turned it into a wheel. I can take this stack, and this actually happened in the Bible, two places. When Joshua 
across the cross the river Jordan. They said, this is the land of flow of milk and honey. He took the staff of Moses and slammed it in the ground, in the soft ground. And it took up root. Well, when they realized this was the land of Amalekites, and they were pretty rough characters, them, them, uh, they called them uh, uh, the Neph Nephilim, which is the uh, giants, the Nephilim. Well, they, they said, man, we got to move on just a little bit far. They went back to get it. They already taken up roots. They pulled it up. And they went on a little farther. And it was in the desert area. And they, the people started falling sick and dying and stuff. And, and the saints began to eat on people and stuff. It was a bad thing. So what they do is tap it to the ground again. And the snake on it. Said anybody who looks upon that to be healed. And that's what we have the symbol of the doctors. The snake on this on the staff. But I can take this staff, go out in this yard and stab it to the ground. Come back one year later and whatever's in the ground, it lost. It goes back to what it was. I can take an iron leg off this chair, go out there, stab it in the ground, you think that ain't gonna do it? And then when I come back, it'll be gone, it'll be rotted in one year. It goes back to what God created it to be. And you can take the earth, the earth that's around that, and use it for iron ore to be remanufactured into something else. That's right. And everything God gives us is regenerated all the time. All the time. Oh, my. That the spirit, that the, the spirit inside beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Yes. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may reign, that we may also be glorified together. Glorified together. I don't know. There is His glory that lives in us. Each and one of us. It's in us we can't escape. When He comes back, we will all be glorified together. We'll all be raised. The dead in Christ shall rise first. He will set up his his temple upon. He will set up his throne upon the mountain, the, the, the temple mount, and everything will be as it was supposed to be for a thousand years away. And the glory of God is still in us. He will He will use us every day. He will use us. You know, there's been several people have been they went to heaven. And they, and they say, like Jesse Duplantis, we, we watched that video and stuff, but there's, there's light and there's no shadow. Like, like wherever I stand, I cast a shadow. There's no shadow. Darkness can't be in there. That's right. Light is on me. It's on me present. That is saying light is on me. It's on me present. It never goes away. God showed me that we are heirs and joiners. We were adopted as heirs and joiners, adopted in crying out of our Father. Because we were His sons. Then we failed. But His Spirit still stayed in us. His glory still stayed in us. And we cried out. When Jesus came, was crucified, died on the cross, and we accepted the second Adam, which is Jesus. And he is our brother. There's a song that man is just tearing me. Ooh. My father is creator. My brother is a savior. And I hang out with the mighty Russian wind. Ooh. I don't to a mansion. I'm on my way to heaven. That's oh, right. did I mention? I've been born again. Amen. Oh, I love that song. That's right. Amen. God is good to me. Because there was a time in my life that I didn't know about that glory that lives in me. And it was taught to me. And it just elevated me. That no matter what I go through, He is right there with me. Amen. I'm an heir and a joint heir. To my father. He's my daddy. He's my daddy. 
Now then, I also studied on this that goes with it. That light inside of you is his anointing, his fire, his glory. So if you need healing, it's in you. That's right. Amen. If you need deliverance, it's in you. If you need knowledge and wisdom, it's in you. All you got to do is ask for it. And the anointing that is in you arises and puts forth. There is not one single gift that he has ever held back from his children. Amen. Not one single gift. It's in us. Hey, right there. Everything that we need is inside us. But see, the devil, he wants to try to discourage you and think that you need something else instead. Amen. He wants to keep you down as long as he can. Because, see, if, okay, if, if Stacy wouldn't have been, if he would have been down, not being the man that he is, those people wouldn't have, if she wouldn't have come to those people, who should have been there? Who should have been there? Everyone is on a journey. Every single one. Every one of us is on a journey. He is going to put people in your path that, that you're supposed to witness to. Right. Have you ever, have you, this happened to me many times, have you ever been somewhere at a gas pump or something and somebody literally was standing beside you for a while yeah. and you talked yeah. to them and stuff mm -hmm. and they drove off and you never missed the name of Jesus? Yeah. When it comes to you, Yes, Lord. Yeah. Now he's got to put that somebody else in that person's path. It's he's going to keep working. That's right. right. I, I got a cross, and it's, it's time for me to start cross walking. Like right, that big white cross I have. Yeah. I was up. Uh, I was up. Uh, I got done singing at, uh, in Birmingham. And I was coming home, and Deborah said, uh, to stop by the store. So I stopped by the store, and I went over you know, to the little gas station. And there was a and there was a, a cup going across the parking lot, so I just was going to drag it. it up all over the trash. Well, there was a man in a white uh, Ford pickup with a trailer on the back, 16-foot trailer. And I would not have seen that if I didn't pick up that cup. I picked up the cup and I walked to the nearest trash can. And I put it in, and there's a big old 12, 14-foot long cross on the trailer. The wheels on the bottom of it. Man, look at that thing. And I said, dude, I like the cross. And instantly he started talking to me. And I could feel the power of God on him. I could feel the power of God on me. And it was one of the God ones. But like, it go up. Hair goes up. Who's going to have it? And, uh, and uh, I said, I'm Brother Isaac. He said, I'm Brother Mike. And every time I talked to him, he was like, ah. He was like, ah. He was asking me. Ah. <laughs> he was feeling them. And he's walking about that high off the ground. He said, man, he said, I'm a crosswalker. And I said, you got to come together. It's got, it's got wheels on the bottom. And, uh, and he said, man, he said, let me tell you some stories. So he told me stories where he was literally walking down the road and stopped a rest at a curb. He stepped on somebody's property just to rest. And this woman come out screaming at him, get that thing off my property. Oh, my word. That's screaming, facing was a witch. Yeah, she, was. she said, I'm a witch. Respect me. <laughs> he just sat and looked at her. He never said a word. He never said a word. He just, he didn't, he didn't say a word to her. He just put his hand on the cross. He didn't know he was going to have to throw it in and run her. <laughs> he put his hand on the cross. He just stood there. And she stood there a second and she turned around and was still violent. And he just started mumbling a prayer with his breath. And she went halfway to her house. Stop. Turn around and start crying and run back there and knelt down there. Amen. And he Amen. never said a word. Amen. But the cross do all the work. That's Amen. right. He's got a lot of stories like that. Amen. And uh, I hugged him and all of a sudden, man, just about the power of God to come on me and on me. And he said, Brother, he said, God told me you're supposed to come to my church. So where's your church? He said, Kansas City, Missouri. I'm like, Lord, mercy. Okay. <laughs> And he said, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a gospel singer and I'm a preacher. And he said, well, he said, yeah, you're supposed to go. And I, and I said, I said, man, that's all. I like the truck. I like the trail. I like the cross. And all that. He said, you know what? God give me every bit of it. I said, what? He said, six years ago, I was in prison. Life sentence. 
Yeah. But I said it in prison. When you have so many drugs upon your person, they just stick in there. They don't let you have it. Okay. If you have like I think it's 716 or 700 or something grams of, of a controlled substance, it's called a life sentence. And so they, they had him in there, life sentence. God saved him. God set him on fire, set him ablaze in prison. And he said, God, he said, if you save me and deliver me out of this, I'll live the rest of my life for you. Amen. Amen. Bam! The door's open. Amen. And he didn't have, praise God, and he didn't have no money. So here he's going to do God's work. A man, he, he built his first cross out of old, old lumber he found. He's walking down the road. Well, a man give him a truck. Give him Amen. that white uh, F-150 extended cab. Nice, nice. And he's like, well, I'm carrying the back. He said, I need a bigger cross. I need a bigger cross. So he made a bigger cross. Well, they couldn't carry in the back of the truck no more. So he got a 16-foot trailer. <laughs> and here, here he said, I said, you want to see the most amazing part? He pulled out his bill phone. And he had he had money in his bill phone. And he said, this morning, when I left Kansas City, this morning, I had four $100 bills in my bill phone. And he said, I haven't stopped to witness to nobody. And he said, I have not stopped to walk my cross anywhere. He said, I have eight in there now. Amen. 